WBNE. Hello, and welcome to episode 27, all about the road to Isengard. Chapter 8, Book 3 of The Two Towers, being the 27th part of That's What I'm Talking About. My name is Mary Clay. If that's too complicated for you, just call me MC. And today I'm joined once again by Christina Khan. Welcome back, Christina. Hello. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to have you on because Mm -hmm. as we were talking about via text last night, this is a very boring chapter, but you're an exciting person for (laughs) me to talk to. So I'm glad that you came on for a boring chapter. (laughs) This is, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Yeah, this is a chapter. It's like... (laughs) Like when you when people say that like Tolkien really like describing landscapes, this oh, chapter boy, is howdy. just like a prime example. A lot, a lot of beautiful scenery. Oh, so much! I just, <laughs> I wanted to like. There, there was several points where I was like, I can't do this anymore. This is my breaking point. Yep. <laughs> I was when I I read it through. A couple times. And the first time I read it through, I was like, okay, I'm going to skip all the descriptive cha- paragraphs. And then I'm going to go back and read it word for word. And even when I went back and read it word for word, I was, I still felt like I was skipping a lot of scenery just because your eyes kind of like blur past yeah, it. Yeah, it just know? glazes over and you're just like, I don't know what's happening. So, yeah. well, <laughs> kicking it right off. This is chapter eight. That's right. I can read Roman numerals. The Road to Isengard. <laughs> And I should have known, like, I don't know why my brain was like, oh, this is going to be an excited. It's literally called the road to Isengard. They're just going to Isengard. Is all well, they happening. dangled that Isengard. You're like, oh, are we going to Isengard? And like, we are, but. <laughs> They're taking really the hobbits to Isengard. Yet. I've had oh that God. stuck I'm in so- my head <laughs> for probably just, a solid week. Because you put, you clipped that in your last episode. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. I was listening to that. Um recently yeah and, yep that's been stuck in my head too that's all i could think about when i was reading this chat was they're taking the hobbits to eyes and god i feel like um because you're such a meme queen i feel like a lot of the time you you like discover scenes that you've seen memed but like, oh yeah you, have, you know but you're like reading them for the first time and you're like that's what that meme means like it's very the exciting Boromir, one does not simply walk into mordor meme <laughs> Oh, Boromir. Uh, well, what's funny about that is that every single male character that was introduced up until the Council of Elrond chapter, every single time they introduce a new... Ma- oh, there's a gross gnat in my face. It's fine. Um, <laughs> every time a male character came in, I would go like, is this the one does not simply guy? And my guest would be like, no, <laughs> no, it's not. And then I think when Boromir was introduced, I was like, is this the... And my guest is like, no comment. And I was like, that's it. It's him. <laughs> oh, no comment Boromir. is good comment. The I'll never forget when I watched it's always really satisfying when you when you're like watching a tv show or a movie or something and you see the thing that is a gif that you use all the time Mm -hmm. or like a reaction gif or gif i'm a gif household it myself yeah gif for sure um linguistically that tracks (laughs) yeah and i remember watching citizen kane for the first time and i feel like everyone's gonna yell at me for this but like i flipped out when i saw him clapping because i was like it's the gif it's it's that (laughs) gif of the guy clapping with the really angry face on oh okay that's where that came from and that's all i (laughs) recognize citizen kane for is oh it's that movie that has the the gif of the guy clapping with an angry face (laughs) yeah just knowing gifts is a interesting frame of reference for like going into a piece of art yeah (laughs) Well, and I've never seen that movie either. So it's maybe okay. I should you don't. Watch it. You know, you don't have to. You really don't have to. It's honestly one of not the that good. one of the hills that I would die on is Citizen Kane is not a good movie, and so many right. people are like, it's the greatest movie in history and symbolism and motifs and blah blah blah. blah, blah. I'm like, it's boring kind and of boring? slow and yeah. and it Rosebud is. For you who hasn't seen the movie, this is going to make no sense, but Rosebud is the sled. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll write that down. Write that down. It's important. It's important. <laughs> um, and now that I've alienated approximately 50% of the audience six minutes into this episode, um, 
I was trying to think of a segue for like, you know who else is alienated? Aragorn, but that's not it. So No, they're feeling some serious camaraderie right now. Yes. So they have finished the biggest battle in history. Oh, so I am laughing at myself because I went into chapter seven, the Helm's Deep, just being like, oh, it's another chapter. And I finished it like, oh, okay, Mm -hmm. it it was a battle. Cool. And then afterwards, I've just been learning more and more about the legacy of this scene in the movie. And I Helms, saw... Helm's Deep is, is like such a legend. And I it's saw a meme a that apparently there is 19 hours of footage of this battle from the movie that wasn't ever edited or released or, or used. And I'm like, what? It's... Quite spectacular. Did, they, did they decide to film the battle? Even if they decided to film the battle in real time, that's still longer than the battle lasted in the book. In the book, <laughs> it was maybe 12 hours. It was one night because it started so different, in the middle of the night. overlapping perspectives. You got I, but, different um, perspectives. It, that's I, and madness honestly, to me. The, <laughs> it is madness, but... Also, the, the footage that did make it into the movie is just so detailed and beautiful and spectacular. I'm very excited for you to watch it because it's beautiful. I am. I am i didn't realize this until, like, now it's, oh, by the way, listeners, Happy New Year! It's 2020! Oh, Woo! Yeah. Um, <laughs> Happy New Year! <laughs> this and, is the first you know, episode Tolkien's, in 2020. Tolkien's birthday, um, Tolkien's birthday is this tomorrow from the date we're recording this which is oh happy birthday um, Tolkien oh shoot yeah so by the time you guys are listening to this happy late birthday Tolkien I needed to like as soon as I started this series I should have like gone and written down important dates that I could do like cool or fun stuff on those dates and if I was really with it I would do something fun where like I make lame bus for his birthday. <laughs> well, as one social media manager to another, I probably should have told you when I realized that tomorrow was Tolkien Day. That's okay. That's okay. It's, it's <laughs> not your it's job to because... social media manage me. <laughs> it's funny because almost our whole office is engaged with Lord of the Rings right now. Like, I've been reading yes. Two Towers, and um, Haley's been reading at the Brandy Lane office. Haley's been reading um, Fellowship just because she is inspired by being on your podcast she's really yes. reading it for Haley, the millionth time. Haley was guest for I believe chapter one of Two Towers. Mm-hmm. Yeah don't yes. quote me on that. That's accurate. Um, and then our other co-worker Mike is reading slash listening to um, the series for the first time in his life and oh, that's so um, fun. He is, he's on he's like catching up with you but he's probably gonna pass you so he's at the beginning of t- Two Towers I think. Woo! I have not. So the whole office has been very yes. Tolkien lately. Perfect. Exactly my plan. <laughs> I'm taking over the world. One office. I think you been. are. Yeah, it's happening. <laughs> um. So, yes, they have finished the battle. And my favorite thing about the start of this chapter is that Tolkien starts it as if we are not 500 pages into this book, where he says, King Theoden and Gandalf the White Rider met Again, upon the grass beside the deepening, but there was also Aragorn, mm. son of Arathorn, and Legolas the Elf, and Urkenbrand of Westfold, and the lords of the... Like, he gives everyone their official names. Like, I forgot. It's Legolas the roll call. is the elf. It's, <laughs> it's, like, um, it's like the roll call of who's, who's not dead. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of who's not dead, I'm not dead yet. I'm not dead. Yeah. He says he's not dead. Um, is <laughs> Gimli. And Aomer, yes. they, and also Gambling, who I forgot existed, they show up from where they had been separated in the battle the night before, and Gimli comes up and goes, 42, Master Legolas, and <laughs> I love that this little rivalry is still going on, and I hope that it goes throughout the rest of the series. I don't think it will. I think it's just a running joke for this one battle. But it would be really yeah. fun if, like, in the last chapter of Return of the King, they're, like, finishing the battle. And <laughs> Gimli's, like, there's, like, one person left to kill. And Gimli and Legolas are at a tie. And they're fighting over who gets to kill him. Because then that that person would win. <laughs> 
Um, speaking of Legolas and Gimli, I think I've shown you this edition that I have. Um, every time I read Lord of the Rings, I read a different edition because I have a lot of them. And the one I'm reading right now is like circa, I think like 1985. And it's, the cover just has Gimli and Legolas in it, kind of like a, like an album cover or something. And Legolas has a (laughs) mullet and Gimli (laughs) is the most ripped little dwarf. And they are both grasping their weapons and like gazing at each other. It's like very, very, delightful (laughs) i thought you were i was i thought you were gonna start describing them like sitting on horseback together like looking off into the distance at battle and i was there is a sunset but legolas with a with a mullet is that's (laughs) so 80s that's so amazing yeah you'll have to take a picture and send it to me so i can share it with the audience okay oh that's (laughs) so great yeah i really enjoy looking at like random covers and editions and copies of Lord of the Rings whenever I'm in there's so many because there's so yeah it's I mean it's not like the bible or anything but it's definitely one of those books and series that's published a lot in a lot of different ways and I found definitely I bought a copy a copy of the hobby A, a good lord I cannot speak I bought a copy of The Hobbit, and it has, like, the weirdest looking cover, and it kind of looks like a bunch of, like, a random collection of tarot cards on it, and... Cool. I don't... It, yeah. I re- I was like, this is such a weird, unattractive copy of this book. I'm gonna buy it, because <laughs> it's me a $3. Picture. Yeah, and if it's, like, weird and funky and you haven't seen it before, why not? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know who else is weird and funky? Gandalf! <laughs> <laughs> doing Very great nice with segue these segues. And, yeah it worked it worked yeah so yeah Gandalf shows up and Amor's like oh look who it is thanks for showing up at like almost the exact last minute I mean I can't be too annoyed with you because you saved our ass but at the same time you keep doing this to us where you, you just disappear. <laughs> and yeah, so he said, yeah, he says, Strang- strange help you bring is what he calls it. Yeah. He says, uh, once more you come in the hour of need, unlooked for. And that's such a diss. Like, <laughs> I, know. I don't even want it's you. Like, we, we didn't ask for this, Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> no one want, no one invited you. You just <laughs> invited yourself. And then they're talking about they throughout this section, they keep looking off at the woods, which are standing there really ominously. And at first I was I mean, I am kind of confused still Um, (laughs) because they are looking at him like, oh, these are evil, bad things. But I thought it was setting up that, oh, they keep looking off in the distance at the woods and thinking like, oh, do those woods seem to be getting closer? Because I thought this is where the ints were going to meet them. And I thought they were going to be like, oh, that forest isn't a forest. It's a bunch of tree people. Mm. What's that? Um, But it's like... It's just a creepy forest. It's just a creepy forest. (laughs) Is that the doings of Saruman's magic? I was wondering that as well. I'm pretty sure it's... I, I couldn't tell if this was like... And the maps don't always help that much. If this was like the southern edge of like Fangorn... Um, if they could, like, feel the creepy, even though the Ents are over by Isengard. Yeah, that's what you know I was what confused I mean? about, is I thought, like, the Ents were, I don't know, I don't know. Because they talk about, Treebeard talks about how some of the trees in the woods have been touched by darkness, and Saruman has mm-hmm. turned them dark, so I wonder if that's what this is, because... Later, in a random bit of magic will solve everything, the, they Classic. just, like, disappear. And it's like, the evil trees were no more. So I don't know if it was, like... Yeah, let me pull up. Well, I think map. that I think that part was about um, something else. Well, okay, so that was about when they take their orcs' bodies away, right? Um, yeah, that later. happens there, too. Let me see. Okay. Wait, there's Isengard. There's no, because Helm's Deep is not anywhere close to Fangorn. So I don't know what like evil woods these could be. Maybe it's just some like regular evil woods. Okay, so I know two forests from Lord of the Rings, really, and one is Mirkwood and the other one is Fangorn, and they're both a little bit haunted. You know, my I, like, understanding maybe just all is the that woods like, are haunted. They're all a little bit haunted. 
Yeah, they yeah, all the, it's stem just like from a, the old forest. and It's a really old place, and there's been just so much murder there, and everything is haunted. So much murder. <laughs> um, <laughs> speaking of so much murder, the battle... <laughs> Oh, uh, actually, right. I'm going to backtrack for a second. Yeah, so they're looking at the woods, and they're like, I don't trust that. What's up with that? And Gandalf... So, okay, so what I really wanted is... Because they're saying, like, oh, Gandalf, is that not your doing? Is that your wizardry? And he says, no, that's not my wizardry. And what I really wanted is, like, well, if it's not your wizardry, if it's not your doing, then whose is it? And then we just do a hard cut to Merry and Pippin, like eating and drinking with Treebeard because it's them <laughs> who woke up the Ents and not like Gandalf or Aragorn or someone with substantial right. power or authority. <laughs> Sometimes it just takes a little bit of effort yeah. to make a big change. Oh, yeah. There's a <laughs> quote. Well, there's a quote uh, after the Treebeard chapter, I think about like, a small it's like the smallest rocks can start an avalanche and it's like oh that's very cute mm, what a beautiful hobbit metaphor but the rest of them at this point don't know that these are the ants coming or that the ants are coming or have been awakened because gandalf is right. not helpful once again and just tells it I to them in a riddle gandalf, <laughs> i feel like gandalf never is like really sure of the answers to any of their questions so he says it in riddles so that way if he's wrong he can just be like i said i didn't say it was ends like, i said it was an old power yeah yeah <laughs> you he's said being super cryptic on purpose that you know <laughs> i believe that and at least that's that's an explanation that i accept wholly um rather and then than he distracts you with a song <laughs> <laughs> yeah so he gives a little riddle and says, ere iron was found or tree was hewn when young was mountain under moon, ere ring was made or rot was woe, it walked the forest long ago. And Theoden says, what will the, what's the answer to your riddle? And Gandalf's like, well, you're going to have to come with me to point. Isengard. Right. <laughs> like Theoden, you don't understand how riddles work. Exactly. You're supposed to guess. Yeah. And... Uh, but just just once again, I'm like, Gandalf, he's he's a king. I think you can tell him a couple things. You don't have to, like, tell also, it to everyone, but... Definitely the king deserves... I, Gandalf just really sasses Theoden, like, really hard in this chapter. There's a couple... There's a couple lines of dialogue, I think, a little bit later where he's just, like, really, really, really rude to Theoden. He's like, you're stupid. Why do you think this? Yeah. And I'm like... Be nice to this guy. He's the king. He's been haunted by yeah, I think, worm, worm tongue. I think Theoden lets it slide because Gandalf, like, saved his life. And Yeah. Well, and he's, like, a Theoden's, like, a really good king, you know? He's, like, he doesn't have the same kind of conceit that some other kings might have. You know, mm -hmm. he's, like, a good man. He yeah. just lets her, he's, like, we need this man. I'm gonna... <laughs> Let it go. I know, yeah, so he says, well, if you come to Isengard with me, you, we, you can find out the answer to my riddle. Ooh, isn't that so fun? Um, <laughs> and A scavenger hunt. <laughs> and they um, make a plan where they're all going to rest for the day or the afternoon. A little nappy. And kind of gather themselves because they did just have a huge battle. Apparently the biggest battle in cinematic history, though they don't mm -hmm. know it yet. That it was the biggest And battles. Theoden is like, I need a nap. <laughs> yeah, Theoden's like, I'm tired and I'm old. <laughs> Can we rest yeah, I like, for a second? I really like this line where he's like, alas, my old age is not feigned, nor do only to the whisperings of warm tongue. He's like, <laughs> even though I'm not haunted by warm tongue, like I'm still old. He's like, I'm not faking it. I actually nap. am that old. <laughs> yeah. uh, so they make a plan that everyone, so Theoden, Aragorn, Gimli... Legolas, Aomer, mm -hmm. Gandalf. That okay, guy. I think those are the named Urkin the named Brand. people. Urkin Brand. <laughs> Does that he guy. go with them? What'd you call him? Did you call him? Did you call him Birkenstock? I Last said it episode. sounded like an off brand of Birkenstock. Like if Target <laughs> was gonna make a version of Birkenstocks that was twenty dollars, <laughs> they would call him Urkin Brands. I, and I would buy those because it's Lord of the Rings reference. 
Oh, well, I would buy them because they're $20 <laughs> Birkenstocks from Target. So. That's true. <laughs> you got to hit both audiences. I'm pretty sure I own $20 off-brand Birkenstocks from Target. Oh, I 100% do. I wear them all the time. Yeah. They're so yeah. comfortable. <laughs> not, not so much right now. I mean, I got to tell you, I'm not a summer person nor a spring person because just the hot, I don't like it. But the one Aww. thing that I do love about warm weather is that I can wear my Birkenstocks. It brings me <laughs> the greatest joy ever. Aww. My feet are so comfortable. Um, anywho, you know who doesn't have Birkenstocks? <laughs> None of these people. Well, I don't know. Legolas, I feel like, would wear Birkenstocks. He would. <laughs> now I'm thinking, I'm thinking about it. Legolas would be... Do Visco girls wear Birkenstocks? Okay, so Legolas on my book cover with this very mullet would definitely wear Birkenstocks. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, anyway, so they start to pick up the pieces after the battle, and they are picking, they're gathering the bodies of the riders and making mass mm-hmm. graves. They're gathering the bodies of the people, the other like towns and other people who were there fighting. And they it's a really small mention um because they go to the other side of men who were fighting with the orcs on kind of yeah, fighting the, for the saruman and yeah the men of dunland and mm-hmm. i just i just appreciated the small little detail because it says uh the men of dunland were amazed for saruman had told them that the men of rohan were cruel and burned their captives alive and I think that's so it's when fantasy has those little doses of reality that are really true to life where like this is like the politics of war. This is like what the bad people do or this is what the enemy does. Like this is this is what they do. They lie and manipulate their followers or whoever to get them on their side. Yeah, totally. This um the hillsmen kind of remind me of um I mean, there's like a thousand and one ways you can t- tell that George R. R. Martin read Lord of the Rings and his name is not <laughs> not the only way. But there's Hillsman in A Song of Ice and Fire series too. Um, and they are also savages kind of. Like I, these guys aren't really savages necessarily, but they're definitely less civilized, I think is the implication. Um, and one of the main characters in... Game of Thrones just, like, pays them to, like, work for him. And they're like, okay, we've never really seen money before, so we'll come with you. And sometimes it is that easy to influence someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's freaky how sometimes it's like, oh, what a fun escape from reality. Oh, wait, this happens all the time. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Um, And then they're also gathering the orcs. And Mm -hmm. they don't really know what to do with them because they're like, yeah, I mean, what would you do? There's way too many to burn. There's there's way too many for us to bury. We can't. uh, Gandalf told us not to chop down any of these trees for wood to make a fire. So I don't know what to do. And they ask Gandalf and Gandalf basically says, like, like, we'll have new answers tomorrow because something happens later that. I guess he already knew about, which I'll get into there, but I don't know. I just made me laugh of like, hmm, these giant heaps of dead orc bodies. What should we do? Mm, (laughs) That's a problem for tomorrow's Gandalf. And then they just leave there. (laughs) Uh, We'll figure that out later. Yeah, yeah, not my problem. Um, And then, oh, it also, I should mention, our homeboy Hama has passed. He died Mm -hmm. um and rest in peace rip uh i'm sorry i thought you were a bloodbender that one time um when i heard you literally when i heard you say that i was like oh my god obviously because that episode of avatar the last airbender has haunted me haunting is the theme of this episode like seriously it's so creepy it's awful it's awful I'm glad you love Avatar The Last Airbender. Oh, I love it so much. Maybe that's what... So I've been freaking out about what I'm going to do after Tolkien because in my mind, this wasn't ever going to be a super long project, but I definitely thought it would be at least 
one year before I got to the movie. No, I'm going to finish Return of the King before in 2020. I'm going to finish Return of the King. Wow. That's really impressive. Anyway, so I'm like, what am I going to do after these? Because yeah. I like podcasting and now we have this whole official network. By the way, WBNE.org. Go check out all of the other amazing shows <laughs> that are now on the network together. Yes, I've definitely seen you posting about this. So. Yes. Okay, good. That means I was doing my job because I was... Yeah, you're killing it. Ethan and Tyler, if you're listening, don't ever launch a podcast <laughs> the day after New Year's Eve because I was incapacitated. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt like an Weren't awful. I felt like an awful person because I wasn't on, as on top of like sharing and posting as I wish I would have been. So I'm glad you said that you saw stuff. So yeah, you <laughs> that did, means great. I, you did I, great. I did. I did part of my job sufficiently. Um, but yeah. Anyway, so maybe I'll do Avatar: The Last Airbender. I don't know. I haven't read that, that idea be by Tyler, Ethan, amazing. or anyone else. It's such a fun. I love that show so much. I'll be on for every episode. It would be. Super different, though, because obviously I know mm-hmm. everything about what happens in Avatar The Last Airbender. So I don't know. Maybe I find someone who hasn't ever seen it. Um, oh, yeah. And they come on. Uh, anywho, this isn't Avatar The Last Airbender. This is The Road to Isengard. Um, and so they take off in the afternoon because their plan is... Which, to- like... Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, they they just like they didn't nap very long. I know I'm worried about them. I was them. thinking about too, because Gandalf was like, "Oh, we need to go to we need to go by the cover of night." But they leave in the afternoon. Like, just keep sleeping; it'll be okay. Yeah, and their naps weren't very restful because they were doing all of this work. They were picking like I don't exactly think picking up a field full of dead bodies, human or otherwise. Is the work of <laughs> that can be done and digging mass graves. I don't think you well, can do that those, in a couple hours. I think that those people are like different from the people because uh, it says that okay. the king chose twenty men. So those twenty men get to nap and everybody else <laughs> has to clean. Uh, okay, that makes more sense. But like, I still would give them like a full night. Yeah, after exactly. War to <laughs> nap. It's not an easy business. This war. This war yeah. game. That's a great movie. Matthew Broderick, anyone? Okay. Um, and then Another movie I haven't seen. <laughs> that actually is a good movie. Oh, oh, I know that movie, actually. It, like, I Matthew Broderick looks like a baby. Yes, it's from back in the day. I totally, it, it was like, um, it was like Ender's Game before Ender's Game. But I think it was actually after Ender's Game because the book came out a long time ago. Anyway, I know book? what you're talking about. Scratch that. When did, huh? Hey Siri, when did Ender's Game come out? Ender's Game was published in 1985. Yeah. Nice. Spot 1985. On. So that was probably about the same time. When, when did War Games come out? Which one? Uh, mm. Is that not what it's called? Mm. Why isn't it not coming out? Yeah, I think so. War Game. Movie. I can't look it up on my end because my keyboard, my desktop keyboard, is literally the loudest keyboard in the world and it will make for a terrible ASMR. 1983. Okay. All right, so very, okay. very similar, all in the... <laughs> so Orson Scott Card stole it from... <laughs> yeah, maybe, I bet you he was, like, in the middle of writing Ender's Game and went to go see War... He's like, oh, this new cool sci-fi tech movie. Yeah, I'll go see it. And then he's like... Oh, my God. Son of a... B- he took my idea. <laughs> <laughs> that's my, As a writer, that's my biggest fear, is oh, somebody accidentally stealing my idea. All the time. Not even that, just, like, the idea of, like... I've, I'm always sitting on these ideas or, so I did, I've done NaNoWriMo. So this past November was actually the last, the first time in several years that I didn't do National Novel Writing Month for listeners that don't know what it is. And it was the first time that I haven't done it because I, my brain was like, I don't know what you want from me because I had zero Mm -hmm. ideas. Anyway, but pretty much all of my NaNoWriMo quote unquote novels are incomplete they're just over five, five, 50,000 words. and Which then, is all you need to do yeah, to win. And the, so I have so many like bad, incomplete, quote unquote, novels. And my worst fear is like going to the movies and seeing a preview for one that pops up. And I'm like, literally, if I had just been less lazy and had like a little bit more motivation, that that could have <laughs> been my idea. Like, this has been sitting on oh, my computer. Well, you got to finish them. I don't have... I have a podcast to do. When do I have time to write a book too? 
Some, <laughs> something that writers are really good at is telling other people they should be writing <laughs> to procrastinate writing on their own. Why don't you go write your book, Christina? I know. No, I know. You're right. You're right. Um, <laughs> so this book that Tolkien wrote that he actually did finish and publish. Great um, segue. <laughs> I'm full of them today. Um, actually, I'm not. They've all been really bad seconds. Um, so they leave after a very short rest and mm-hmm. go into the woods. And the creepy woods kind of, everyone's kind of like, I'm not going in there. And Gandalf's yeah, like, oh, f- come on, it's fine. And he walks through and the woods kind of like create this path slash tunnel kind of like the the trees bend kind of to to give them a way to go and it's extra creepy Mm -hmm. the description is the trees were gray and menacing and a shadow or a mist was about them the ends of their long sweeping boughs hung down like searching fingers their roots stood up from the ground like the limbs of strange monsters and dark caverns opened beneath them extra creepy yeah it's very like um like a uh, snow white right when she's running through and Ooh, all the yeah. trees are grabbing her the fingertips yes good analogy and then but then there's legolas who's like i don't know what y'all are talking about i i love trees i'm happy to be here even if they are a little <laughs> bit creepy looking and he I, it's so funny in this part because it's like basically implying that like Gimli and Legolas are in a relationship and Legolas is the one with like his head in the clouds and Gimli is the one who has to keep him grounded because it says that Legolas could stand there for hours and like listen to the trees if Gimli (laughs) would let him. They are a great couple. Yeah, Legolas is like that kid who sees something gross and goes to like inspect it, you know, and it's like, just, just like leave it alone and he's like no he's like no <laughs> and he i keeps, need to learn about this yeah he's like oh exactly i want to learn he does that i think twice in this chapter and gimli's just like would you please Which keep I up commend that legolas legolas isn't he's he is kind of creeped out by the trees but he's like i want to learn about them i want to learn why they're like this and i want to i want to yes. hear what they talk about and how they think and gimli's like mm-mm Mm-mm, no. I feel like, like, Legolas is very fearless and only, like, curious. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's an interesting yet dangerous mix. <laughs> yes, exactly. Makes for a great character. Yeah. And it makes him seem, like, youthful, even though he's oh, very, very old. I know what he's reminding me of right now is Lilo. What? From Lilo and Stitch, where, like, all the other kids and all the people are grossed out by Stitch, but she's the one that's like, nah, he's a cool dog. And it's like, that's not a dog, (laughs) that's an alien kid. And she doesn't care, because she's, she is fearless and curious. Yeah, it's a little, um, Hagrid-y, too. Yeah, that too. With the dragon, et cetera, he's like, we got it. (laughs) This is gonna be Look at my cute little baby child, Hagrid, that's a dragon. Oh my god, for Christmas I got the illustrated edition of um, Goblet of Fire, because that's the most recent one that came out. <laughs> Did, and um, I cannot get the illustrated image of the Blast Ended Scroots out of my brain. They're so disgusting. I haven't I've, even looked at it yet. Should I go look at it now? You need to look at it. Okay. <laughs> I, it, it's, Christina, uh, talk to the people while I go get my, my copy. <laughs> Here, I'll just read aloud. Legolas and Gimli were now riding together upon one horse, and they kept close beside Gandalf, for Gimli was afraid of the wood. It is hot in here, said Legolas to Gandalf. I feel a great wrath about me. Do you not feel the air throb in your ears? Yes, said Gandalf, as helpful as ever. (laughs) Man, I'm back. Did I I do a good job? I don't know what you were saying, but I put my headphones on right as you were saying throb in your ears, and I was like... I was just reading. Where did she, what is she doing? I was like, am I going to have to like censor this out? Okay. I'm literally just reading from the master, Tolkien. Oh, jeez. Okay. The Blast and Did so there, I, I'm pretty sure there's not one, but two different illustrations. Because if you'll remember, the Blast and Did Scroots are a plague upon the fourth years that whole year. Because in year, oh, in year so three, funny. Gandalf... 
No, not Gandalf. <laughs> I said Gandalf. In year th- in year three, Hagrid has the hippogriff and it hurts he Malfoy. He could have been a cool teacher, but freaking Malfoy ruined it. God. Yeah, so then he gets scared. And so for the whole fourth year, they just have blast into his oh. roots. Oh. Are you looking at it? It looks like a... They're disgusting. A scorpion with boils. And it's really bad. I mean, I know it's called <laughs> a blast ended scroot, but it looks like it's just Shire. Bing fire. <laughs> <laughs> you bleep out the S word with Shire. So in the end, isn't that going to be showering fire? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's... That's... Um, yeah, well, you need, we after we're done recording this episode, you need to flip through that book because it's beautiful. Well, I want to come about the illustrations naturally as I reread the books. Oh my gosh. You have so much self-control. Because I, I made a New Year's resolution that I'm going to read every day. And so far, I have kept that resolution. Uh, well, if you host a reading podcast, I'm sure that helps. As you're listening, it's only January 2nd, so I couldn't. Have, <laughs> it's not like you've done a great job. Yeah, I've done a pretty good job so far. Um, yeah, yesterday I read this chapter, and then today I read a couple. I finished a chapter that I had started a couple weeks ago of a book that I don't remember. The Vigilante Poets of. Selwyn Academy, something like that. I don't know. What a name. Anywho. <laughs> what book is this? Two Towers. Yeah, so Legolas and Gimli are, this is when I like texted you, I think in all caps. <laughs> because I was oh, like, yes. They're flirting. it's no wonder that people make fun of Tolkien for having such a dry, dense book sometimes because this is, he goes into two pages where Legolas and Gimli argue over what is more beautiful, the caves of the Helm's Deep or Mirkwood and Fangorn. And the, the beautiful thing is that their argument ends with both of them being like, if it's important to you, it's important to me. I know. Yeah. So they, yeah. <laughs> so after like two pages later of this, Long conversation about trees like and caves. They say, great. let us make a bargain. If we both return out of the perils that await us, we will journey for a while together. You shall visit Fangorn with me, and then I will come with you to see Helm's Deep. And that's so cute. They're going to go on it's a road so trip cute. together. And that's the spinoff that I want to see is yes. Legolas and Gimli's road trip together post Lord of the Rings. Well, that's actually what um, The Return of the King is about. Just oh, kidding. is it really? But wouldn't, but wouldn't, <laughs> no, it's not. But wouldn't that be great? I got, not going to lie, I got really excited for a second before <laughs> I was like, oh, I, I'm sorry. Before I was like, no, that's like way too cutesy for that to be the epic <laughs> finale of Lord of the Rings. Oh, man. I hope <laughs> maybe that's what the Amazon Prime series will be about. No, it won't be. Oh, my gosh. That would be amazing. Just road trip with Legolas and Gimli. But yeah, like that's caves. that's what I want to see. <laughs> caves. Um so they <laughs> come so out of caves. the f- <laughs> they come out of the forest and uh Legolas turns around and so the way that my book cut it off, uh it says Legolas halted and looked back with regret, then he gave a sudden cry, and then I had to turn the page and I because I had their taking the hobbits to Isengard stuck in my head, I thought he was <laughs> gonna scream. <laughs> And I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> it's happening. And, the, and then he just says, there are eyes. And I was like, oh, that's not exciting. Um, and he freaks out because the forest is full of eyes and everyone's. Oh, what's so funny is that <laughs> just like you said, it's a dangerous mm-hmm. combination of fearlessness and curiosity. And Legolas goes back into the forest to examine whatever these eyes are. And Gimli's like, yes. I'm still here. Get out of here. I this is I do not give my consent for this situation. <laughs> and like I do not the approve. same horse. It's yeah, just yeah. like And Gimli's like nope. they're very close to each other with very different <laughs> um objectives. I know. And uh Gandalf says, don't go in there because those are our friends. Those are, I don't know if this is the first time in this book that the ints have been described this way. It says they are the shepherds of the trees. And I just really like yeah. that. Um, and he he doesn't come, 
Oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, he says, you have seen ints, O king, ints out of Fangorn Forest, which in your tongue you call the Intwood. And it's also just a really interesting way to think about it because Theoden says that these, the ints were just songs and stories that they told to kids and that they should now... He's like, now we'll think about telling them to everybody because instead of just kids to entertain them like it's pretend, like these are real stories that we need to pass on with care with uh, to other people. Yes, this is also a time in which Gandalf is very sassy to King Theoden when he's like, uh, they come from what you call the Entwood. Yeah. Did you think that name was given only in Idle Fancy? Nay, it is otherwise. To them you are but the passing tale. And it's, yeah. most kings would not handle that very well. Yeah, and, yeah, and then he says, All the years from Eor the young to Theoden the old are of little count to them, and all the deeds mm-hmm. of your house but a small matter. Rude. But yeah, but I mean, he's right, because they, everyone just thought that the ints weren't real. They were like, yeah, these are fairy tales and made up things about you know in songs and stuff and Gandalf says this kind of comforting line he says you are not without allies even if you know them not so just yeah. this idea that like even though you may not know it there are people out there who are on your side and rooting for you and are gonna fight with you and I was like oh, rooting for sentiment. you yeah oh, Get it? <laughs> good, good one MC oh that was you I would never have <laughs> made that connection in my brain well and it is nice i'm sure to hear that the trees are on your side because they can do a lot of damage because Um, they're huge and terrifying and you best not hope they are on the other side against you so exactly they carry on my wayward son sorry (laughs) and they (laughs) what a beautiful interlude they carry on with the journey and um Kind of everywhere they pass has been a battleground recently. And they're like, oh, there's a grave full of all of our friends. There's a grave filled with all of our friends. This is (laughs) fun. Well, let's keep going to a better grave, which is at Isengard. Did people die there? Yes. Wait, hang on. So they stopped to rest one night. And this is when I was. (laughs) I was just like, okay, sure. That's fine. Oh, so first of all, they can see in the distance from Isengard, it says, out of the deep shadow of the dale rose a vast spire of smoke and vapor. As it mounted, it caught the rays of the sinking moon and spread in shimmering billows and spread in shimmering billows, black and silver over the starry sky. So they know that Saruman Mm. is up to something. Something's happening. Oh, yeah. Something's a brewing. Um, And they know that he knows about them or that they're coming or, you know, something's up. Um, And then they stopped to rest. And then suddenly, over the ground, there crept a darkness blacker than the night. On both sides of the river, it rolled towards them, going northward. A mist gathered about them. Above them, a few stars still glimmered faintly. But on either side, there arose walls of impenetrable gloom. They were in a narrow lane between moving towers of shadow. Voices they heard, whisperings and groanings, and an endless rustling sigh. The earth shook them. Long it seemed to them that they sat and were afraid, but at last the darkness and the rumor passed and vanished between the mountain's arms. So that was just a random black smoke that we're never going to talk about. Yeah. At least in this chapter. Basically just like, yeah, just like some spook factor got creeping out a little bit. Also, they just never talk. It's like, I would be the one person to wake up and be like, so are we just not going to talk about the giant dark right. death mist that and also, like, came why here last was, night? Why was the answer to just like ignore it? Yeah, Gandalf says, stay right. where you are, draw no weapon, wait, and it will pass by you. So clearly Gandalf knows something about this. So I would just well, be I the one to be like, why is he not saying Well, anything? yeah, I, I mean, Gandalf is a wizard, so he knows magic. So maybe he can... Quote unquote what? magic. Once again, I'm getting more and more annoyed with how just <laughs> Tolkien's right. just like, oh, what's the answer to that question? Magic. Mm, just magic. Magic. Um, and also, I'm sad for Theoden because he has another night's terrible sleep. <laughs> Poor dude, two in just a row. Some sleep. 
And then also kind of a similar ominous creepy things happens back at the Hornburg, back at Helm's the Helm's Deep area. Yes. Uh, in the in the middle night, men heard a great noise as a wind in the valley and the ground trembled and all were afraid and no one ventured to go forth. But in the morning, they went out and were amazed. And the heaping pile of dead orc bodies, that's gone. That just magically Voila. gone. The, the creepy trees, they're also gone. Are we going to get an explanation about this? No. Lady Turn to page. Draw your own conclusions. But the, uh, mm, uh, mm, I know, I feel like, I feel like, I like, I don't want to say, oh, we're never going to get an explanation about this, but I am moving well into the groove of Tolkien and Lord of the Rings to know that, like, there's a good chance if it's not addressed in this chapter or it hasn't been talked about or mentioned a little bit more that it's not going to be mentioned again. So, yeah, that's <sighs> just right. Makes, I'm just like. It's an ominous black death mist and no one's going to say anything about it. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just move on with my life like this never happened. <laughs> so they get to Isengard. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, also, but going back. So when they wake, when the crew wakes up again, they had noted that the area they're in was, it, it looked like dead and it used to be so beautiful and the rivers were dried up and then when they wake up the rivers are rushing again and there's water everywhere and it's starting to look nice and pretty again so that's just another magical thing that happened that we don't really get too much of an explanation about um and then they yeah they just kind of wake up and they're like oh isn't that nice there's a river there there that wasn't there (laughs) last night um yes so Isengard. Bum, bum, bum. It's just a really long description. Yes. <laughs> what it, he gave Forever. such a long description of what Isengard looks like that I have no idea what Isengard looks like. That is like exactly spot on. That's exactly how I feel. There's <laughs> way too much detail for your brain. Because the other thing is... I don't have, like, the picture from the movie to go off of, to be like, oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense when you you read the words. and I mean, the way that it is in the movie, I I don't even think necessarily looks exactly the way it looks in the books, but... Even the screenwriters were like, I don't know what to make of this. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Definitely what's in the movie is what's in my brain, even as I'm reading this. That's why it's kind of hard for me, I think. I mean... It, I think that the movie just, like, simplified it. Mm-hmm. Because the book talks about how there's, like, houses and chambers and halls. But in the movie, it's pretty much just a tower with, like, a lot of land. Yeah. And so that some was my, caverns for making orcs in. That was my confusion is I thought Isengard was, like, a tower or a castle. And then here it's kind of described more as, like, a town or a village. Well, back in the day, castles... I think you were talking about this with Helm's Deep. Like, the that village would be inside the wall to protect it, you know? Yeah. And so, okay, yeah, I guess that makes sense. There's a village in the protective scope of Isengard, Isengard. which I don't think okay. is something that really happens in the movie. But, um, yeah, it kind of reminds me of, like, like, a deserted, like, ancient Greek city. Yeah, yeah. That's a good way to describe Just like it. Yes, a lot they, of they stone. walk in and yeah, everything is kind of like dilapidated and definitely long ago abandoned and yeah. kind of a ghost town doesn't look good. And they get this they they know immediately that oh, Saruman did terrible things here. Yeah, definitely. Enough to make the place feel gross. Mhm. Um speaking of which, so they enter and there's a pillar of a giant hand. Just speaking of like creepy and gross. They saw that the hand appeared no longer white. It was stained as with dried blood. And looking closer, they perceived that its nails were red. And then creepy. once again, that's Slash something manicure. that's something that they just kind of move right past. And no one else is like, hey, is anyone else a little unnerved by the giant hand covered in blood? Like, no. how do you get blood up there? I know. Who did that? That's what I'm... Also, like, it's a giant hand. That had to have been a lot of blood. Whose blood was it? What? Mm, I just... 
had a lot of questions. So many questions. <laughs> and then I've also been watching a lot of Peaky Blinders lately, so I got red right hands stuck in my head immediately. <laughs> yeah, so then they walk in, and then this is where I lost my d- mind. <laughs> <laughs> because it's such a slow entrance slash reintroduction of these beloved characters. So they walk mm-hmm. in to kind of, I guess, the main castle or center or tower of Isengard. And there at the gates are the doors, which have been destroyed, by the way. They like walk up and they're like, oh, there's a piece of that door over there. and That door's over there. And they're like, something's happened here. It says there were bottles and bowls and platters laid beside. Oh, I backtracking. They get to the gates and they see two people kind of sitting there lounging. There were bottles and plates and platters. I wait. I messed that up. You got up. it. Third time's the charm. There were bottles and bowls and platters laid beside them as if they had just eaten well and now rested from their labor. One seemed asleep. The other, with crossed legs and arms behind his head, leaned back against a broken rock and sent from his mouth long wisps and little rings of thin blue smoke. And they approach, and one of them jumps up. A young man he looked, or like one, though not much more than a man... Not much more than half a man in height. His head of brown curling hair was uncovered, but he was clad in a travel, in a travel stained cloak of the same hue and shape as the, as the same shoe, oh my god, as the same hue and shape as the companions of Gandalf had worn when they rode to Edoras. And he says, Welcome, my lords, to Isengard. We are the Door Wardens. Mariadoc, son of Saradoc, is my name, and my companion, who, alas, is overcome with weariness, is Peregrine, <laughs> son of Paladin of the House of Took. And it's at this point that I thought we were meeting Pippin and Mary from the future. <laughs> 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 or I thought we were meeting their dads, because he introduced himself so formally, and I was like... Yeah. I was like, there's no way that Mary and Pippin are here. I thought these were older versions, either Mary and Pippin from the future or Mary and Pippin's fathers somehow. And I was like, that, that's no way that's Mary and Pippin because they would have been like, you know, Gandalf would have immediately made fun, which he kind of does. And I don't know. I, I just, I lost it. I was like, oh my God, it's Mary and Pippin. <laughs> it's them. <laughs> Um, but yeah, what a, what, and so what's funny is that I had zero idea that it was Merry and Pippin, um, until further down in this passage. And then I went back and read the part where it says there were bottles and bowls and platters laid right. beside them as if they had just eaten well <laughs> and were well rested from their labor. I'm like, yep, that's Merry and Pippin. <laughs> My favorite part about this is that they are like Gimli and Legolas and Gandalf and the hobbits are all trading insults and then um who Theoden says it cannot be doubted that we witnessed the meeting of dear friends because they're just like ripping on each other yeah I feel like that's very relatable yeah Gimli comes up and says 200 leagues through fen and forest battle and death to rescue you and here we find you feasting and idling and smoking uh (laughs) it's so funny that they're like seriously We did all of this, and you're here totally fine, eating and drinking like nothing is wrong. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and they say, like, oh, it's just so funny. It's so great. Yeah, well, and I love that when Gandalf says, these hobbits will sit on the edge of ruin and discuss the pleasures of the table or the small doings of their fathers, grandfathers, and great-grandfathers. Blah, 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 if you encourage them. (laughs) Yeah, so that comes right after there's a quick thing where they're talking about the smoke that Pip- that Mary mm-hmm. has and Theoden's asking him about it and Mary starts to go into the history of it and trails it like he says, <laughs> who like, you know, it was to- Tobold Hornblower of Longbottom in the South Farthing who first grew the true pipe weed in his gardens about the year 1070, according to our reckoning. But And Gandalf is like, Gandalf says, you do not know your danger, Theoden. Basically like, oh, Lord, you should not have asked them that because they Don't won't start, shut up yeah. about the history of pipe weed. And I want to believe that Tolkien was self-aware enough to know that this was like, he was ma- he was making this joke about himself, and he did this kind of being like, "Okay, I get it. I talk a lot. Ab- I talk a lot about pipe weed, <laughs> etc." But History. I don't know if he was self aware enough to. Yeah, do that. I don't know either. 
<laughs> uh, it's good. Um, and then they hear, kind of in the distance, they hear the orcs. I mean, not the orcs. The ints. <laughs> I was like, orcs? Uh, plot twist. The orcs are back. <laughs> um, the orcs are back in town. And, and Theoden is just like, <laughs> I, I cannot battle again. I have to sleep tonight. <laughs> it's like, please let me sleep. Um, and so they hear the ints and they hear a horn blowing triumphantly. And um, they say that, uh, what's his name? Treebeard is inside and is awaiting your arrival so that everyone can talk about everything that's happened so far. And this is where we, le- this, uh, we learned that the ints like barged into Isengard and took over and took Saruman down. Is that my under the correct understanding? Yeah. And that's yeah, the chapter that I want to read. I want yeah, to read I mean, that chapter so much more. You can, rather um, than them just you can going down watch those. the movie. Okay, I'm because I I flipped to the next chapter and I started reading the first couple paragraphs to see. I'm like, oh, maybe it'll go back in time and we'll see what happened with, or it'll like jump back. And we'll see what happened with Mary and Pippin and the Ents. And that's not what happens in the next chapter. And I'm like, I didn't yeah. want this boring chapter of them just traveling and Gimli and Legolas talking about trees and caves. I would have Certainly much rather not. read a chapter with Mary and Pippin and the Ents battling in Isengard. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. And no, like, but also knowing that they win the battle and that it ends with Mary and Pippin, like, eating and hanging out on the steps waiting for yes. Gandalf and crew to arrive <laughs> unscathed unscathed but yeah so they um uh Theoden and Gandalf head inside I believe and <laughs> Pippin says so that is the king of Rohan a fine old fellow very polite <laughs> And I just like End of that. chapter. <laughs> yeah, that's how the chapter ends. And I like that Pippin was kind of like, it's not that he wasn't impressed by meeting a king, but you think he would have been a lot, you think he would have been more like, he would have been fumbling over his words, or he would have been nervous, or he would have been like, oh, gracious king, lord, you know, whatever. And he's like, oh, cool guy. Nice guy. Hope, maybe he has <laughs> some weed for us that we can smoke now. <laughs> and that is the Aww. end. Of the chapter. We made it to Isengard. We made it to Isengard. Woo! And the next... nothing scary, except for some black smoke. Yes, some mystery black smoke that we'll never never know about. Um, (laughs) Or maybe we will. Who knows? I don't know. The next chapter, Flotsam and Jetsam, is going to be hosted by either Casey or Valerie. I can't remember which one of them said that they wanted to do that chapter. But um, that was the chapter that I was like, those aren't real words. And they are. I thought those were just the names of the eels and the Little Mermaid. Um, and then everyone was like, I did like polls on Twitter and Instagram to be like, did you know, like, on, come on, people, like, let's, let's all be honest. You didn't know they were real words either. And I was very wrong. They're like old piratey words, and I feel like people who read a lot of like fantasy and stuff probably have heard some some pirate lingo in their day. I was not pleased with that. That I was like, <laughs> I thought we were all on the same side, and I feel betrayed. So okay, um, but yeah, I guess we'll see what happens in the next chapter, and then I'm. Assume it now that I'm thinking about it, because the chapter after that is called The Voice of Saruman. So are we not even gonna get to talk to Saruman in the next chapter? That's annoying. That's annoying. <laughs> he's right there. Like, he's right there. Well, We're here. Let's do this. Let's get this show on the road, people. Uh, anyway, well, Christina, do you have any stray thoughts or anything that we didn't touch on? No, I'm really glad you got to Helm's Deep because I feel like, um, well, you know, that's not from my chapter. That's from the chapter. But, <laughs> you can um, talk I about it, too. Just, I don't care. Ethan and I like, didn't do a too great job of covering that because we kept getting <laughs> off topic, but it's fine. It just um, it just is, like, where the story starts to really pick up speed, I feel, in, like, a big way. And oh, it, yeah. And the mo- momentum kind of helps to carry you through the end of the next one. That's good to know because I am I did realize there's only three more chapters left in book three, and then it's... What I'm dreading the most, book four, with just Frodo and Sam. 
and Gollum, yeah. I think, shows up at I'm some definitely, point. I'm definitely with you in that that's, like, the least interesting story to me, and Woo. the characters I like the least. <laughs> but but it is the whole point of the whole story. Eh, is that's like no the, fun. like, the ring. <laughs> it's... So... I love to make fun of Harry in Harry Potter because he's rarely anyone's favorite character. <laughs> Like yeah, it's, called- it's only when he starts getting like older and jaded. I think it's when like we're um Ron and Hermione start kind of dating and Harry's like, "Oh, crap. This is so weird." <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, you're finally a real." Yeah, he gets funny stuff. and but yeah, like book 6 is when is like peak Harry, I feel like. But Yeah. Ever like you ask someone, "Who's your favorite Harry Potter character?" They'll be like, "Oh, Dumbledore, Sir Hermione, McGonagall." Very rarely will they be like, oh, Harry Potter. You know, they might be like, oh, Harry Potter is a favorite character. I like him or whatever. I don't have any issues with Harry Potter, but. (laughs) Yeah, I'm trying to think of like who my favorite Harry Potter character is. And now I just feel like I want to say Harry because I'm like, people love you. Just to prove me wrong. (laughs) I mean, it's it's happened on the show before. People do things to prove me wrong all the time. So I'll put a I'll put a Twitter poll up and. Uh, no, that won't work. I don't know. I'll do. So, I'll, <laughs> do like, so, I'll do. I'll <laughs> do. Like how, I don't like, know Twitter how I would do the Twitter poll because the options would be like: Is Harry your favorite character? Yes. No. And it's like that's not really <laughs> helpful. That's not good. You know, data and surveying. But anyway, well, Christina, what would you like to share? Well, first. Where can people find you on the internet? Um, you can find me on Instagram at your girl of the world. Um, and Woo. I don't really use I don't really use my Twitter. I'm trying to change that, but for now, there's nothing there. That's okay. And then <laughs> also, uh, what is something that you would recommend to someone who enjoys Lord of the Rings? It could be a TV show, a movie, another book, any form of media. So for someone who likes Lord of the Rings, um, I, I think one of your guests has already recommended this actually, but I'm going to recommend it again. Um, but I might also be wrong, but the name of the wind, um, is the first book in a trilogy. And for people who like really long, detailed fantasies, (laughs) epic, (laughs) epic, um, epic, fantasies in like the literary sense of the word epic not the like millennial sense of the word epic um the name of the wind is definitely um a similar class of fantasy novel it's part of the king killer chronicle interesting yes. yeah so i'm pretty sure the first two books are out and the third book is pending oh cool well there you go so i so, just did a qu- i just on. did a google search to be like what is this what is this about um, cool. Well, that obviously is a very popular. Maybe I'll add that to since I want to read every day this year. Yeah. Maybe I'll, no, I no, I take that back because I also told myself that I'm not allowed to buy more books until I finish the books currently on my shelf, which honestly That's aren't a great that policy. many. Like, I don't have an absurd amount of books where, like, oh, that's an insane thing for you to say that you can't buy more books until you finish what you already have. Because there's only, like, maybe eight books on my shelf that I haven't read. And I need to just read them. Because I obviously was interested enough in them that I wanted to buy them. So... I need to read them at some point. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll add that to my list of once I'm done with current books. Well, you don't you don't have to add it to your list. It just depends what you're into because it's it's kind of a slow book. And I, like I didn't it's not my favorite book I've ever read. So it's funny that I'm recommending it. But specifically for people who really like Lord of the Rings, I think they would also like Name of the Wind. That's what I'm talking about is a proud member of WBNE. Woo! You can learn more about WBNE and the network by going to WBNE.org. Um, I had some people text me or message me, ask me what WBNE stands for. And it's like the call letters for a radio station. So the W and then B N E is bacon in eggs. Well, and, but the, the N is the, like, apostrophe N. So you get it now? I'm sure you guys get it, because you're smart people. Um, but there are many amazing shows now on the WBNE network, um, so you can learn more about those by going to the website. And also, here is a little plug, intro, I don't know, clip from Hello From Elsewhere, since Casey and Valerie will be on upcoming episodes. 
Hi, I'm Valerie. And I'm Casey. And we're a married couple who loves to travel through fictional worlds. On our podcast, Hello from Elsewhere, we dive deep into the themes and characters of movies and books, all through a positive lens. We explore all your biggest questions, like what is Steven Spielberg's obsession with father figures? What is the history of fictional maps? And why are animated foxes so attractive? Oh, Robin Hood. From Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, and Jane Austen. To Star Wars, Marvel, and classic Hollywood. If it's pop culture, we're interested in exploring the meaning behind it. With new episodes every other Friday, come visit us in Elsewhere. The cover art is by Graphite, a.k.a. Vaishon Brandon. Support him on Instagram at graphite.vmb. You can find the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at TolkienAboutPod. You can find me on Twitter now at MCWhatsUp. That's right. I did it. I changed nice. it. Nice. M-C-W-A-T-T-S-U-P. And Instagram is still the same at MC Turn Down for what. The Facebook group uh, is there as always. You can click on the link in the description to find that. Um, And then the Patreon, who is sponsoring this episode. I said the Patreon. That's not the right terminology. The patron who is sponsoring this episode is Becca Eddowes, my favorite Broadway gal besides Eni. Eni is also my favorite Broadway gal because they (laughs) co-host Sincerely Us. So thank you, Becca, for being a sponsor of today's episode. So that's right. I mentioned it. Patreon. You (laughs) You too can be a sponsor of that's what i'm talking about go to patreon.com slash about pod and you can find many wonderful tiers for all forms of financial contributions the three dollar tier will get you into our discord server for the network where you can talk to myself as well as the hosts of the other shows and it's a super awesome welcoming community and then i'm really excited for the ten dollar tier which i'm calling eleven z's because it's both Bonus content. So most of the episodes, not this one, though, because this was a boring chapter and a short chapter and not that much happened. But a lot of episodes go long because there's so much to talk about. And I have to cut some of that content, unfortunately. And so that's what the bonus content is going to be. And also, if there's so like I said, this week probably won't have much cut content because we're pretty on schedule with the recording. So Mm -hmm. at the very least, I will be posting pictures of my notebook from the notes that I took for this chapter, which look like nonsense. So you can at least get a little glimpse into what's going on in my brain, which is kind of scary if you think about it. But um, it's fine. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, yeah, so learn all about Patreon and the tiers and everything. And I so, so appreciate your support. And to all the people who have already become patrons, thank you so much. Well, that being said, do you have any parting words for the audience? Stay hobbity, my friends. Stay hobbity. I love that. <laughs> and that's what I'm talking about. Man, I was trying to think of something cooler than Stay Hobbity, but that's all I got.